Good day everyone. This plant I'm going to be talking about here today is called Great Angelica. It's also called Purple Stemmed Angelica. Very common over in the east coast of Canada and spread throughout thinning its uh, population as it hits more of the uh, central regions of the continent. This is a native plant uh, in the carrot family. Great Angelica is one of the uh, larger members in the carrot family. So this plant is uh, mostly noted for its edibility and medicinal properties, mainly to treat digestive ailments. The edible uh, properties of this plant, its seeds have been added to food and the flowers and seeds have been used to spice foods. The stems like cow parsnip is the main edible property of this plant. It can be cut up. Uh, Often it's peeled and then boiled for 15 minutes at a time in two changes of water and eaten like cooked celery. The root of this plant has been used uh, to create a candy. They would cook it very well in uh, concoctions of liquid uh, sugar or some kind of a syrup and they'd make a candy out of the uh, tap root of this plant. So one of the easiest ways to identify purple stemmed angelica or great angelica is the uh, right away distinct giveaway is its solid striking purple stem. However, there are examples where the stem is not completely purple. Some of these shaded examples in here are uh, partially purple. They're smooth, consistent purple though. There's uh, spots in here, the more shaded the plant, the more green they tend to be. These plants can be found in uh, localized stands, often growing together. Usually they're never solitary. There's always a couple to many of them. They can grow anywhere from four to eight feet high at maturity, about uh, 2.53 meters at their uh, maximum height. These plants are biennial, meaning their first year, they're a rosette, and in their second year, they mature and become a flowering plant where they reproduce by seed and then die. Right here, here's an example of a first year angelica plant. That's in its stage as a rosette, meaning a bunch of uh, basil leaves coming out of the ground. Here's a second year plant and it's uh, already seeding right now. This plant flowers usually in June flowers drop and then it'll uh, produce seeds in July maturing into August where it'll seed in the fall and reproduce next year. Often you can find plants from the previous year still standing dead where they grew. These plants are hollow like most members of the carrot family. Some of the identifying features of purple angelica aside from its obvious purple stem beginning at its leaves this plant has huge leaves, often growing in excess of two feet across and two feet long. The leaves, like almost every member of the carrot family, are alternately arranged on the main stem. One, two, three. The staggering formation up the main stem, and then they split off into a bipinnate fashion. So here's a leaf splitting off a main stem and it splits off twice into its opposite leaflets. So these rather large broad leaves are uh, finely divided and they're pinnate, meaning they're feather shaped. They're a broad leaf. They're broadly lanced like you'd see in water hemlock. Now here's the thing. These leaves, they're very, very finely toothed and the veins end at the tip of the notch and not at the uh, inward V of the notch like water hemlock. It's very important to remember that when identifying any member of the carrot family. The underside of these leaves are a striking snow bluish color contrasting with their purple stems. Like you can find in cow parsnip, these leaves have a uh, fairly large sheath surrounding the stem of the leaves. So the flowers early on in the year in the spring when they're in flower they're greenish white they're not a solid white like most members so that's a identifying feature in itself but aside from the color which can also vary because there are exceptions 
the shape of this flower head is very important because this is one of the uh, main members that has an almost round uniform, almost a globe type umbel. It's not flat and it's not roundish, it's very round, almost spherical. And that's a striking uh, characteristic of this plant. So these seeds are really quite striking too because they're a very large bulbous seed. They grow in pairs where each flower wa once was. And they're uh, quite a large seed compared to any other member of the carrot family. The hogweed species, giant hogweed and uh, cow parsnip, have a large winged seed, almost like a key off a maple tree. So they're different in that respect. But these have an unusually large seed. So one property to be aware of when it comes to angelica species, especially the purple stemmed angelica, is uh, this plant produces uh, some phreanocoumarins, which is a chemical in the sap that causes photosensitive reactions in certain individuals. Many people are unaware of this property with angelica, but it is there and it can cause a nasty reaction with your skin upon exposure to sunlight. So be aware of that. So these stems are quite large. They can grow in excess of two inches in diameter. They have a white powder that rubs off generally throughout the plant. And the purple is not splotched. It's a very smooth, consistent purple throughout the entire plant, which is a good way to separate it from uh, poison hemlock. This plant grows out of the ground, out of a very, very large taproot. This taproot can uh, grow in excess of 14 inches uh, long, and it's next to impossible to pull out of the ground by hand. It'd have to be dug up to be harvested. So this plant scent-wise is a very spicy odor. It's a really pleasant odor, and it's got a pleasant flavor when it's cooked. It's not advised to eat this plant raw. It's always advised to cook it in two changes of water for 15 minutes after it's peeled. G'day everyone. This plant I'm going to be talking about here today is a member of the carrot family. And this is an elusive plant in my area called water parsnip. So water parsnip is one of those plants that uh, is very, very closely resembling the many poisonous lookalikes in this family, despite the fact that it's completely edible. Every single part of this plant is edible, although some research and history has determined that this root can be potentially poisonous to certain livestock. Humans historically have eaten this plant without any problems. However, this is one of those cases where it's best left untouched and appreciated because it's very, very closely resembling water hemlock. In fact, out of all the plants there possibly is, this one and water hemlock probably look the most similar. And this has resulted in the most amount of poisonings. People trying to forage on this plant and accidentally eating water hemlock. So this plant typically grows about six feet in height, although this one's been run over, so it's kind of recovered and grown anyways. But other than that, it'd be a lot taller. You're most commonly gonna find this plant growing in swamps, around lakes, in cattails streams and rivers. So this is a rather small example. The umbel can typically reach six to eight inches across, but this plant was run over or damaged, so it's had a hard time here. But it's continued to grow flowers nonetheless, so thankfully for our sake, I can finally record this. In terms of its edibility, it's a very, very simple plant to prepare. This plant is usually cut up, destemmed, and boiled for about 15 minutes and uh, till tender and then eaten like boiled celery. Usually the stems are the part that's harvested along with the roots. So for ease of learning, I pulled this plant out of the ground. So unlike the water hemlock, which resembles uh, many fingers sticking out of the base stem, Water parsnip has a fibrous root system, which makes it extremely difficult to pull out of the ground without pulling the stem off. If you try and pull water hemlock out of the ground, 
it'll come out with ease usually with the complete root stock. Again, the uh, root stock resembling anywhere from one to seven fingers, look much much larger, broader uh, root system than these fibrous little roots of the uh, water parsnip. So here's a pretty good view, and from what I've seen on the internet, relatively unprecedented view of the inside of this uh, root here. So one thing you can note right off the bat with the inside of the rootstock of water parsnip, so that hollow stem terminates at that root system and becomes solid on the inside. The water hemlock on the other hand has a section of hollowed out chambers that progressively gets smaller as it hits into the root system here. This one's just the opposite. It's got one big hollow stem that runs all the way up, stops, and then becomes a solid tap root with these fibrous little roots sticking out here. The other thing you need to notice, there's no yellow oil protruding out of this system. Again, this plant being edible, that poisonous cicutotoxin is not present in this plant. Water hemlock, when you cut it open, immediately that volatile toxic alcohol oxidizes and turns a deep yellow to an orange color. That's another sign. So the smell of this root, it uh, smells very similar to water hemlock. It's a very kind of sweet, sugary, carroty odor. Water hemlock smells pleasant. This does too. The only thing I could say differently is uh, if you uh, can remember the uh, taste of a crushed Advil or a crushed Tylenol. It's got a kind of a caustic, sharp taste. You can kind of smell that when you smell water hemlock on top of its pleasant odor. There's something off about it. This is not right. It's a warning sign. This plant doesn't have that, but the uh, two smell very closely. Uh, they, they resemble each other very closely, and you cannot rely on the sniff test for this at all. So here's something to really watch out for. If you cut this uh, stem, cross-section it, cut it in half like that, you'll notice there's a flat back, and then it wraps around like celery, extremely strongly ridged. This is one of the strongest ridged plants that I've ever encountered in this family. But the back of it is flat, so it's shaped like a D. It's not round at all. Other thing, it's hairless, and it contains absolutely no purple whatsoever. That's indicative of uh, water hemlock typically, and poison hemlock especially. This is fully green, this plant, entirely. So this flower system here, one of the biggest key features of the idea of this plant is those bracts sticking out of the base of that flower umbel. Any of the hemlocks, no bracts at all. Not even any of the hogweeds have those bracts at the base of their uh, flower umbels. Water parsnip, on the other hand, does. The other thing to take note is the little miniature umbels that makes up this compound umbel has pretty large looking bracts at the base of them too. Each and every one of them. If you were to compare this plant with one I've talked about previously, cow parsley, Cow parsley has no bracts at the base of this. However, it has small bracts at the base of its mini umbels. Out of all the plants I've discussed thus far, water parsnip is the only one with bracts at the base of both of these. Additionally, it's not a solid umbel. It's spaced out mini umbels like you can find in the hemlocks. So here is the most important identifying feature of water parsnip. It's compound, but once divided leaves. The leaves are alternately arranged on the stem, just like any member of the carrot family. And here's a really good view of its once divided compound leaf system. The leaves come out of the stem alternately, but its once divided leaves, leaflets, are oppositely divided on its leaf. Then it has a solitary leaf coming out of here. There's one terminal leaflet right there. So these uh, leaves are generally very, very, very fine. You can barely see the, le the veins in these leaves here. However, if you were to put it up to a microscope or look very closely if your eye permits, those little veins terminate at the end of the notch and not into the notch, which is the most important identifying feature of water uh, hemlock.
but additionally water hemlock even at the size even before it produces flower umbels it has two and three times pinnate leaflets which means that it uh, branches off numerous times and not just once divided water parsnip no matter how big this plant gets it only ever divides once these leaflets so the leaves are always the way to go when you're dealing with this plant So this plant, had it not have been damaged in its early stage of growth, probably would have grown to about four to five feet tall. It can reach about six feet tall normally. Water hemlock, I've seen it nearly nine feet tall. But this has the capability of being a very, very large plant. Despite when it is found in my area, it's usually solitary and pitiful. It's not a very uh, large plant or a very common plant around where I live. 49 out of 50 times I thought I've identified this plant it's been water hemlock grown so I can honestly say all the references that state that water hemlock is less common than water parsnip it's simply not true it all depends on your area and you need to know this plant so here's the final consensus that I have to say about it if I were in a survival situation I wouldn't eat this plant I'm 110% certain of the identification of all of these plants. I've been working with them for a number of years now. You have to have your facts straight here. As you can tell thus far, the carrot family, especially being a tricky family, many of the uh, characteristics in their identification really overshadow each other. So, if 9 out of 10 of the characteristics line up, but one doesn't, that's not good enough. You have to have 10 out of 10. If nine out of 10 of them line up, you got the wrong plant. You need to uh, backtrack and figure it out from start.